good for you. Very good. Okay, okay. See, that one was hard. Where do you see what comes up next? That's the kind of game that Emile Jacques Dalcroze played almost a hundred years ago, when at the age of 27, he became a faculty member of the Conservatory of Music in Geneva. He was never trained as a teacher. He was trained as a musician and an artist. And he had his first teaching job, and he was really shocked by what he found. He found that most students were trained technically, not musically. They really couldn't pick up a score and hear it. They could read notes, but they sometimes didn't read the music. And sometimes they had trouble just physically with connecting their ears and their bodies. And he decided to try a little experiment. He did just what we did. He took the students into a big room, and he said something very shocking. He said, take your shoes off. Uh, I just want you to walk to my beat and stop when I stop and start when I start. And he found out something very interesting. Some students could do it all the time, some students could do it some of the time, and some students couldn't do it at all. <laughs> now, you've really done very, very well. And we still have the same problems 100 years later that he found in the conservatory. We still have in colleges and universities and music schools today. The problems have not been solved. But he has ways of dealing and processing those problems. And this was one of the games, which is a real strategy for forcing you to listen very, very carefully with your whole body and your whole soul. And you did a fine job. Most teachers are faced with these problems when they teach music, and they're not quite sure what to do about it. You know, in America, we still kind of say, either you got rhythm or you ain't. Either you got music or you don't. All right, we're going to have a new game. Take your seat. Get your hands ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to? Are your hands really ready to clap? Is your body poised and ready to move? This is a Dalcro's lesson, and the first thing you learn is to really be here. Really be here and be ready. Because when we listen to music in a Dalcro's class, we listen with our whole body, our whole soul, our brains, and our nervous system. Get ready. One day, a piano student walked into Jacques Dalcro's studio and played for him like this. See whether you can follow me. Dr. Crows realized that that was an arrhythmic performance, spastic, without either time or shape. Very difficult to follow. Follow this one. This was the next student who came into Jacques Dalcroze's studio, and that student played like this. Jacques Dalcroze said, you know, that's perfect, but it's dull. It's boring and it has no life. But all the notes are there and they're all in the right place. But it doesn't feel like a human feeling. It feels like some kind of robot playing. And he said, aha, that's errhythmy. That's an errhythmic performance. You're going to hear a lot of that. And you're going to be very bored with it. And the next student came in and played the same piece. And get ready, played like this. We finally have a beautiful and human and moving performance. And that's called Eurythmy, where all the balances of motion and rhythm really come together and make sensible and interesting designs. Even when you clapped it, you began to move through space. Did you notice how you really began to use your body? And you began to smile, because I really did talk to you then. So the problem is, how do we get from the boring 
arrhythmic performance or the intolerable arrhythmic performance to that eurythmic performance that moves people. Most teachers are happy with the arrhythmic performance. At least they got the right notes in the right slots. And that's hard enough. And then some directors and choral conductors and orchestra conductors just sit and pray the night before the performance and say, please, just let them play the right notes at the right time with a reasonable tone, and I'll be happy forever. And it presents a tremendous problem, especially in the area of classical music, because we have artists who are very well trained. They are trained to make beautiful sound, whipped cream, vanilla ice cream, with a cherry on the top, and very little rhythmic movement. And it gives classical music a bad name. People really think classical music is dull, that the compositions themselves are boring. The compositions aren't boring, the performance is boring. And Jacques Dalcroze worked for years and years to invent a method that would help people come from arrhythmy and arrhythmy to a eurythmic understanding of how to make music move so that the audience could be moved. Jacques Dalcroze knew that rhythm is the heartbeat, pulse, and lifeblood of music. But music teachers seldom teach rhythm. They teach timing. And timing is music as arithmetic. But rhythm is not arithmetic. It's solid geometry and calculus. Rhythm comes from the Greek word rhythmos, which means flow or river. And the only way humans can move and flow through space is by shifting weight. Of the three elements of music, pitch, rhythm, and dynamic energy, the last two, rhythm and dynamic energy, are entirely dependent on movement. So rhythm comes through physical motion. Jacques Dalcroze defined rhythm as the varieties of flow through time space. And I would add that music is the art of moving sound through time and space. Jacques Dalcroze made rhythm the basis of his method by insisting that all musical training be studied in a rhythmic manner. He calls this musical training rhythmics. Rhythmics permeates all the elements of the Dalcroze work. Let's look at arrhythmia, arrhythmia, and eurythmia again to understand what makes them different. Tim is demonstrating an arrhythmic performance. Notice the beat is unclear and uneven, and the movement between the beats is uncontrolled and spastic. Tim has found the beat, but the performance does not move through space and is mechanical. He's showing the beat, but not the rhythm. Clap along with him. Tim is showing the meter as well as the beat. Move your hands along with him. As you move with him, pay attention to where you change direction. This indicates the meter. But notice that his performance is correct, but still dull and lifeless, a sign that it is arrhythmic. Something is still missing, something which gives life to the performance. That something is movement between the beats. Finally, Tim is showing what he hears between the beats. Notice each beat has a different position and quality. Clap with him. What you are seeing and feeling is one of the effects of eurythmy. Rhythmics is the study of ways to use physical motion to understand all the elements of music.
Jacques Delcroze was a solfege teacher. So that's where he began to develop his method. In his era, a solfege teacher taught sight singing, ear training, theory, harmony, and counterpoint. Solfege is an integral part of his method, and he expanded that system to include the study of fixed dose scales, improvisation, and the basic principles of musical expression involving nuance, accents, and phrasing. His final goal was the development of a refined internal hearing. Stop. In a typical solfege lesson, students look either frightened or bored and their bodies hang down in a lifeless way. Notice in this very beginning solfege rhythmique lesson how alert and alive faces and bodies are helping students learn. Leave out everything and put in everything I asked for. We're going to play an improvisation game. We're going to create our own sounds and make our own music. And the first thing I want you to do is we're just going to get a turn to find a way of using the sticks to make a new sound by using a new movement, all right? I'm going to make the first one. Watch. Try it. Once more. Jacques Dalcroze was a gifted improviser and believed that classically trained musicians should be able to improvise. Improvisation is a way to explore how much of a musical okay. score a has, way. in fact, been learned as well as a way of exploring new sounds and motions and the techniques of musical expression. The children are now having a conversation with the sticks. They follow one specific rule. They do not interrupt each other. They wait to the end of the phrase. These are initial studies in phrasing and other compositional techniques. Advanced performers use improvisation to understand musical structure and compositional techniques on a very advanced level. Does this sound as if we are playing memorized music? Yes. That's because we speak the language of Western music. Melodic patterns, rhythm patterns, phrasing and form have been internalized so we can draw upon them to create our own combinations. Improvisation demonstrates what the performer has internalized and synthesized. Studying music through improvisation allows the performer to constantly synthesize. One of the outcomes is that performers can keep a feeling of spontaneous improvisation during many, many public performances. Being able to improvise in the style of the composer can also reduce the performance anxiety associated with sudden fears of developing sudden amnesia when you're in front of the audience. Many people mistakenly think that Dow Crozier Rhythmics is about dancing. And though it has been used to help dancers become more musical, it is not about making pretty movements. No, the goal of Dow Crozier Rhythmics is to experience the music externally until we can internalize the movement and sit or stand quietly while the sound makes the souls of the audience dance and sway. So, the method known as Dow Crozier Rhythmics is based on rhythmic, rhythmic solfege, and improvisation. These three elements show up in almost every lesson. I have a question. I've noticed that the other music education methods have very specific goals in mind, like uh, music literacy and developing improvisational skills. I don't really, I'm not really clear about the goals of Dalcros. So there's two questions, actually. The first one is, what are the goals of Dalcros? And the second one is, why do we have to do all this running and jumping and skipping? <laughs> Good question. It's a question a lot of people ask, and they never understand why we have to use body movement, why we have to use movement at all. And the answer is that Dalcros sees music 
as not just from pitch to pitch, but how do you move in between and around pitches. Not just from beat to beat, but the qualities of change in each beat. And not just from harmony to harmony to harmony to chord to chord to chord, but how they progress, how they move forward in musical time, musical space. And he says the only way you can do that is through moving. It's not just about beautiful sounds that come out of your throat or instrument, but about how those beautiful sounds move between the pitches and beats and harmonies. So it follows that if you study music, you have to study its movements, not just its notes, not just its time, but how it all moves together. The genius of Jacques Galcroix was that he was the first teacher to recognize that music should be taught through movement. Unfortunately, many people have the misperception that Dalcro's training is about pretty movements. No. What we are studying is the relationship between sound and movement and movement and sound. We are studying the kinesthetics of the sound. Kinesthetics comes from the Greek term kinesthesia. Kines equals motion or movement. Esthesia equals awareness of. As a teacher, you understand that movement is a natural and joyful part of the child's world. Kinesthesia, awareness of movement, is now considered to be the sixth sense, and children use kinesthesia to learn about their world. But Western education attempts to train the mind and pays little attention to the kinesthetic sense. Jacques Dalcroix knew that the kinesthetic sense could be a powerful technique in teaching music. If teachers could be taught to observe and analyze movements as they are related to musical learning. That is why the first training of a child in music should be their bodies, their ears, their brains, their nervous system before placing them at other instruments. The primary reason humans create music is to express emotions. How does movement affect our emotions? How do our emotions affect our movements? Let's try something different. Get ready to sing a song. Are you ready? Here we go. And did you notice the kind of movements you made? Not only did your breath fill your lungs, but your body got into a poised position, very prepared. Let's try a different experiment. Hold up your violin. Hold your bow. Even if you don't play a violin, get ready to play. Ready? And! Aha! Uh -huh. Can you feel all the muscles that get themselves together to do that? Interesting, isn't it? Let's get ready to play the timpani. Here are the sticks. We're going to play a nice roll. And the conductor says, ready? And! Can you feel the other parts of you that move? Different parts of your body that move. Good, now we're gonna try another one. Get ready to play the piano. This is gonna be a fortissimo chord, Beethoven sonata, very angry, very fierce. Get ready, and, aha. Uh -huh. We'll take that same chord and give it a different affect. It's a chord that says, gee, I finally found the person I really love. Ready? Can you feel the difference in your body for the forte chord? That's because motion comes from emotion. Emotion is the feeling inside. Motion is the feeling outside. And when you produce very good motion in your rhythm, you create emotion in your audience. Music begins with motion. One goal of Eurythmics is phonomimesis, the melding of sound and gesture, which spring from emotion. Jacques Dalcroze wrote, there is a gesture for every sound and a sound for every gesture. performances which contain all the rhythmic elements, beat, tempo, measure, dynamics, agogics, directionality, phrasing, articulation, syncopation, 
accent, rhythmic counterpoint, and many other components of rhythm. In the Dao Po's training, these elements are taught individually and collectively. They help the students and artists arrive at the goal of clear and compelling performance. All of these skills are taught through exercises and musical studies, which we call games. We use games because in addition to being enjoyable, they help us objectify our behavior. We learn what the rules are and can measure our progress by how well we work within those rules. This also leads to self-confidence and the ability to work in cooperation with others. This is a game of inhibition. It says, I can say no, I won't do it. I can say yes, I will do it. Ready? One. Bounce. Hold it. And. Bounce. Hold it. Two bounces, two catches. Bounce. Catch. Bounce. Catch. Four bounces, four catches. Bounce. Two. Three. Four. Think you could do eight? Yeah. You can? All right. Here we go. And. One, two, three, four, five. Cannon, two beats after me. Put your hands here so you don't have to start before two beats. Head, head, begin. Ears, ears, nose, nose, mouth, mouth. Head, shoulders, stomach, back, knees, head, ears, ears, eyes. Nose, nose, mouth, mouth, chin, chin, shoulders, front, back, knees, knees, head. Knees, knees, head. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo. Three beats after me. <laughs> are you ready? Are you really ready? Show me how ready you are. Three beats. Head, head, head. Ears, ears, ears. Eyes, nose, mouth, stomach, knees, head, feet, hips, head, head, nose, eyes, eyes, ears, ears, eyes, nose, nose, mouth, chin, chin, ears, ears, head, front, front, back, back, front. See, it's not easy to remember the directions when you're excited. Just as it's easy to forget where you are in your public performance, when a baby starts crying in the second row. Jacques Dalcroze worked with the Swiss psychologist Edouard Clapared, the teacher of Jean Piaget. Jacques Dalcroze and Clapared developed the primary goals of Eurythmics training. They realized that by using music to teach music, they'd also created a way to teach skills, which are needed in everyday life. Music could be a humanizing force in general education. In life, as well as in music, we need to learn to pay attention. The aim of the first educational goal is to teach the students to pay attention to their environment, to the rhythms and patterns found in nature, society, and to the people around them, as well as the music they study in their music lessons. Turning attention to concentration. We teach the students to convert attention to concentration, to be able to analyze, to compare, and contrast, and to remember. Social integration is the ability to share leadership, to perform as part of a group or alone and perceiving and appreciating nuance or shading. This fourth goal, perceiving nuance, develops the appreciation of the variety of nature, music, art, fashion, and literature which defines our cultures. These four educational goals are obviously important to us, not only for learning music, but in all the arts and every aspect of our lives. Jacques Dalcroze felt these skills not only make us better musicians and artists, 
but better citizens as well. They should be a part of every music class and lesson. And they are taught by the power of music when they are experienced through listening and movement. The genius of Emile Jacques Dalcroze led him to develop this comprehensive system of musical education, which calls into play the bodies, ears, minds, and hearts of the students. But the life of the Dalcroze method comes from music itself, passing through the soul and the skills of the teacher to the students. It comes from the teacher's love of music. This is the highest art of music teachers, that we help our students not only to become more skilled in music, but that we foster in them a deep-rooted love of the art we serve. Everybody got You followed that very well. I have a question. You, you're so very good on piano. I myself am not very proficient on piano. Am I going to be able to use Dalcroze in my classroom without playing the piano? A complicated question with a complicated answer. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, I use the piano, and I do a lot with it, as you can see. And most people who are trained to be really Dalcroze professional teachers with Dalcroze certification learn to use the piano because it has harmony, counterpoint, the range of the whole orchestra, and all the effects that you can make with lots and lots of instruments. However, you can use your singing voice. You can use a percussion instrument. You can use a recording. But a Dalcroze trained teacher, or someone who wants to use the Dalcroze work seriously, has to be a very good musician. I understand that you want a flowing eurythmic performance eventually, but don't you have to start by teaching the notes first? Don't you have to teach the timing first? Yes, you learn the timing first because that tells you where things are. It says here, 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 hold, go. Now go around, 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 and yes, you do have to know that, but if you wait too long to find out how it goes long, going up, a leap to the leading tone, and relax. A new place, and back to where you began. You hear it now, the breathing of it. How one note moves to another, how next note prepares another move, how it goes back and forth, up and down, in and out. That's the eurythmic quality about it. And if you don't get to that pretty quickly, you may never get to it. If you wait too long, you may end up just as a timing machine and think, well, boy, I at least got that. That's hard enough. <laughs> but it's also the difference between reading notes for timing and feeling and seeing long gets weight, going up, jump, and relax. Now I'm seeing motion and timing. So I'm not just watching notes, I'm seeing that gesture. Then all of a sudden I say, this is a new place, but I'm going to go back to the beginning, and suddenly, now that was called technique. <laughs> that says not only can I play fast and cleanly, but I have practiced the techniques of a eurythmic expression. Can you make a crescendo diminuendo that fast? I'm going up, I'm coming down. And everybody begins, the audience begins to go, oh, what a nice slide this is. I hope we have more ice skating and ice sledding. And that's what you do. You begin to see the music and feel it in your body and find out what are the techniques of expressive performance, not just the techniques of hitting the right notes at the right time. A lot of people have the technique of hitting the notes. A lot of them have never studied expressive performance. 
They've never studied scales making crescendo, diminuendo, or vice versa. They never studied two notes legato, two notes staccato. Everything's always been straight. And you know, the more that notes are equal, the more boring they are. When things are all equal, things are equally dull. If you wear nothing but the same color gray, and you have gray hair and a gray face and gray <laughs> shoes, you could disappear into the gray. And that's a very common phenomenon in music education, that people, after much hard work, disappear into the grayness of timing and lose the original purpose of music, which is to make the soul dance. I have a question. I'm a conductor, and I usually don't work with kids. Can I use Dalcro's ideas with my ensemble? Yes, you can use it with small ensembles, big ensembles, private lessons, individual students, because it is a process of teaching musical behaviors and musical concepts as well. It's the oldest of the modern methods of music education, and I feel it's the most comprehensive because it asks for your ears, your eyes, your entire body, your brains, your central nervous system, and your emotions. Now that we've had a taste of Eurythmics, where do we go from here? Well, there are several things you can do. One of the first things you can do is go to the library and look for the work of Emile Jacques Dalcroze. Now, be sure you look under J. If you look under D for Dalcroze, you're not going to find anything. For 15 years as a Dalcroze student, I kept going to the library saying, there must be something about this man. Kept looking under D and found nothing. <laughs> so I hope you don't have that problem. Then there are all kinds of teacher training programs in the United States, in Canada, in Europe, and in Asia. And you can always write to the Dalker Society of America to find out where they're doing workshops, and perhaps some in your area. There are several universities in the United States that give workshops in the summer, and some give them in the winter. This is the first tape of a series. In future tapes, we hope to give you more chance to see the other games that we use in the Dalcro's repertory and to give you some deeper insight into this work. Enough talk. Make your circles. You have eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get ready to pass and change. We go pass. 